How to emulate the same film look and feel with Dehancer? We'll explain it step by step in this color grading breakdown. As a result, you'll get a practical workflow for setting up our tools in our OFX plugin inside DaVinci Resolve. First, let's add the Dehancer OFX plugin and open its settings. In our example, we're working with Rec. 709 footage, so we'll select Rec. 709 as the input source. Inside the Input tab, you can also adjust exposure, temperature, tint, or fix chromatic aberrations, though in this case, we don't need to. Next, we'll choose a film profile. At the moment, Dehancer offers more than 60 film profiles, each reproducing the true characteristics of analog film stocks. Since our example footage was shot in daylight, Kodak Vision 350D is a great fit. You can also experiment with the push-pull parameter, which allows you to adjust the film exposure factor and get various looks within a single profile, but we'll keep it at the default for now. Our perception of color is heavily influenced by contrast and brightness. We'll set those first before moving into fine color adjustments. If you're planning to add a vignette, it's best to enable it early, since it strongly affects the frame exposure. In Dehancer, the Vignette tool is located at the bottom of the tools list. A quick tip. Temporarily set the feather parameter to zero. That gives the Vignette a hard edge so you can clearly see how size and exposure controls behave. Of course, in practice, you'll keep feathering for a natural look, but this trick helps to visualize how other parameters behave changing the vignette size, increasing or decreasing its exposure, or even reversing it to compensate for unwanted lens vignetting. You can adjust the vignette position directly in the viewer using the OpenFX Overlay Cursor. Let's set up the vignette for our example. Now we'll move on to the print section, which represents the real media with its signature color and contrast. First, choose a print profile. The only analog way of interpreting negative films is optical printing, and Dehancer lets us virtually print on different mediums. In this case, we'll go with Kodak 2383 print film, known for its rich, cinematic colors. To achieve a more dramatic and high contrast look, we'll slightly lower the exposure, increase contrast, and adjust color density. Next is the Film Developer tool. In the analog approach, you can individually configure the formula of the developer solution and development process. Dehancer recreates this flexibility digitally, allowing you to create your own developer recipe. Here, we'll make a small contrast adjustment and use Color Boost to gently enrich the colors. Before setting black and white points with the Expand tool, let's enable Grain, since it will inevitably affect those values. This video was shot on a bright sunny day, so a low ISO preset would normally make sense. But for demonstration purposes, we'll use 8mm ISO 250. Of course, you can always fine-tune grain parameters in custom settings. Now we can use the Expand tool to set black and white points. It's helpful to rely on both the visual appearance of the video and the scopes for guidance. Finally, we will use a film compression tool to fine-tune the highlights and achieve a film-like compressed tonal range. The default settings already look great on our footage, but you can always customize them to your taste. Now, with the brightness and contrast settings finalized, let's move on to color adjustments. You can adjust the overall color balance using white balance controls in the source group adjust the temperature of the printing light source in the print tool, or make subtractive style corrections with the color head tool. However, it's best to leave these adjustments for the very end and start with halation, as it can significantly affect color. 
Halation is the film emulsion effect visible as the local red-orange halos around the bright light sources, specular highlights, and contrasting edges. Halation can also produce a pronounced red glare in the midtones, mostly affecting skin tones. We'll use the 8mm slash Super 8 preset. Using mask mode, we can see exactly which areas are affected. As you can see, it makes a noticeable impact on the overall color. Next, we'll enable Bloom, which adds a soft glow to highlights, enhancing the analog feel. We'll adjust the Save Lights parameter to make the effect more noticeable, while keeping the other settings at their defaults. To finalize our color adjustments, let's use the Color Head tool, which emulates the subtractive color correction principles of photo enlargers or printer lights, altering the light's color for print media exposure. In our example, we'll make the video slightly warmer by adjusting the yellow, blue, and magenta cyan color pairs. For a complete film emulation, let's enable film damage, film breath, gate weave, and overscan tools using the 8mm presets to achieve a consistent look. The film breath effect emulates subtle shifts in exposure, contrast, and color from frame to frame as the film moves. The film damage effect adds imperfections such as dust, hair, scratches, stains, and emulsion irregularities. Gateweave recreates the slight jitter of film moving through a camera or projector, often added digitally to breathe life into a digital cinema. Overscan tool simulates a motion picture film scan area with inter-frame space, perforations, and parts of the adjacent frames. Let's preview our clip with all these effects combined. To really nail the Super 8 look, we need to match the frame rate as Super 8 films are shot at 18 frames per second. In Premiere or After Effects, this is simple. Just use the Posterize Time Effect. In DaVinci Resolve, there are several ways to do this. Create a new 18 frame per second timeline and place your clip there. If necessary, render it out and use it in other timelines or simulate 18 frames per second in Fusion using a Time Stretcher node. To use the Fusion method, add a Time Stretcher node and apply the following expressions to the source time parameter. This creates a stepped retiming effect to simulate 18 frames per second playback, while keeping the clip duration intact. Our film emulation is complete. You can use this workflow in your projects, or experiment and create your own. Support our channel and subscribe for more breakdowns and tutorials. Thanks for watching.